This tutorial centers around how to rig a worm gear. A small segment on why to use constraints instead of drivers will be covered also. Let's get started. The purple gear has 32 teeth. The blue gear has 4 segments. It's important to know both, because it makes the math easier. A transformation constraint is useful for this problem. In the meantime let's have a look at the formula. For every 360 degree rotation on the worm gear, one tooth on the gear receiving should cross. This is complicated by the fact that the worm gear has more than one tooth. A quick multiply fix is that. This is what our formula looks like when resolved. So let's do it practically. First set the maximum, Z rotation of the source, to 360. Then input our formula into the Y destination maximum. Then the source to destination mapping has to be set, so that Z equals to Y. The gear is spinning in the wrong direction, so a change from plus to minus. Also check extrapolate to make it spin forever. Extrapolate only works on rotation transformations, in location and scale transformations it resets after some distance. That's the basics, and should work on most worm gears. Let's address drivers and constraints. The top middle object has a driver on it. When driven, it also affects this constrained object. That's because drivers influence every fiber of what is being affected. This includes local information. In the example below, the object being driven is circular. Its driving force being the sideways rectangle. Its rotation signifies a change in scale for this object. When the chain of events is started, it's noticeable that the example doesn't act as expected. That's because constraints don't inherently change an object's local axis. Using constraints on top of drivers results in irresponsive rigs. That's the reason why drivers take precedence, and should be used sparingly. Happy blending.